last few frames, players went wild to theorize it. Maybe it was some blue alternative to redstone, or a new thing like cobalt. But more likely is that it could have been some unused form of the blue dye. Since in this update, there was a lot of changes made to the dyes that we had, and key among those is making lapis lazuli no longer used for blue dye, but rather you have to craft it into a separate item. And given the fact that it's the cleric throwing it out, and they used to use the lapis, that seems more likely in my head. Cobblestone generators no longer work. Because while it's still true that when water thought me, you get a cobblestone block, the sad truth is that every time this happens, the level of the liquid lowers each time. Which means that, unfortunately, a generator can only make about four pieces of cobble before you need to refill it. And for those of you on Skyblock, that would make this challenge basically impossible, since we no longer have a constant way to get cobblestone. But I guess it's not all that surprising, right? Infinite cobblestone definitely isn't realistic, so it makes sense it doesn't work anymore. Water isn't the only one that got realistic physics, since now, another lava will also see the same thing. And the first thing you'll notice when you go through the nether portal is that lava no longer permanently falls from the ceiling, but instead it will spawn up there and flow down and either join the lava pools, or just become a sad little puddle that will form like walking around the nether end. Which is a great build, this makes it a lot safer to use the light from the nether. But I'm going to take that out of the bottom of me just so I can make it over to the fortress. If you're trying to hide from your friends, then the silly way to do it might just be getting yourself a part of pumpkin. Now, not to say that your friends are entropic, but what you might see is that if you actually pull one of these and then crouch next to the pumpkin patch, without our aim tag, you tend to pull through the other textures. Is it stupid? Of course, but if it works situation way, that's good enough for me. Just remember, it only has to work once for it to be worth it. And if everything goes wrong, they still catch you. You can always crack up yourself an iron ball on the that's you'll have a pumpkin. There's not easy work to duplicate all of your diamonds. All you gotta do is lay out nine diamonds in the crafting table to craft a diamond block. And then, you can put one pick up the individual items in the crafting table. And then, one, we still have our nine diamonds in our inventory, but the diamond block will remain in the crafting table. And now we went from nine diamonds to eighteen, giving you a short track to the new richest person on the server. I would just suggest moving. I don't think the IRS takes time to die. Training with villagers is great until they start to lock away those trains. Perhaps you can solve that with the help of portals. Now, in current versions, it's only worth the end gateway portals, but building a design like this, it's possible to start a trade with the villager, and then, once you get pushed through the end gateway, we'll still be trading with that same villager, meaning we can do our trades and they won't even lock. And from there, we're able to max out as much trading as we want to do without ever having the villager actually cut us off. Since when we go back to the portal, it'll be like nothing ever happened. In 1.20, armor looks pretty different, and that's not because we got a new armor type, but rather new types of our armor. Since with the addition of armor trims, we now have 16 varieties that we can use to deck out our armor. I'm just gonna have to work for it, because they can only be got from random generated loot within their respective structures. And while it's expensive enough to add these to your armor, costing one material for each trip you want to add, they're even more expensive to get more of them. Costs with seven diamonds for armor trip that you want to duplicate. So I recommend testing out which one you want to try in random mode, because figuring out survival is just gonna be too much opportunity cost. And with the help of command blocks, other players have tried out and turned these armor tricks into full RGB armor. And now your player can match everything else in your house. You better not look at this redstone is entirely wireless. And you see as much when we flip this lever. This design by 202 name has an infinite range, just as long as you're in the same dimension. The way this works is based off of obscure item mechanic of the game store unique entity ID. And then the delay it takes for that hover to pick up the item will be different depending on that ID. And so when a receiver checks for that specifically timed entity creation, that'll sync up with a transmitter, and allow us to have virtually infinite range on our redstone. But keep in mind, this isn't super reliable in single player. It's mostly intended for server use. But when you got it there, it's a spy of GDs. My studies have prepared me for this. In better recognition, there's a technique called downfalling. The idea specifically here is that you're going to throw an ender pearl and attempt to put down to save yourself. So, start on the platform, jump off, and then throw an ender pearl on the other side of the platform. At that point, you go to the swap over and box, and then try to spam down as many of them as you can to make them quicker. Once you do that, you can ender pearl glitches the pillar, and put those block off to the side of the pillar to land on it. And all the steps to do it sound like a lot when you sound them all out, and once it's happened in real time, it actually goes pretty fast. But if you're not learning it, maybe break it down a little bit. For example, if you're going to be able to do it, you're going to be able to do it in 2% faster than that small light. So, it's going to be a small light. So, thanks for showing me. Since while a normal walking speed would be 4.317 blocks per second, your straight walking, that goes up to 4.405 blocks per second. And just for that small margin, we're able to make this jump that we couldn't otherwise. And to even try to get this jump, we can jump at the exact same time. And then you hold that right up at the last jump. 
miss. So by narrowing your vision down to a low FOV, you can pinpoint where there might be large spikes of entities. Now when you're in the nether, this could be a good indication of a bastion remnant being in that direction. Since usually, piglins, piglin brutes, and hoglins will all spawn upon generation of bastion remnants, and they won't despawn naturally. And when you look in the direction of one, you're going to see more moss spiking up in your F and debug and those surrounding areas. It's not just good for finding things in the nether, since if you get really specific with the pie chart that you're looking at, you can actually use this to find specific groups within the strongholds. And honestly, I think it's a skill at all to be able to play the game for a second and blow up a beat. It just looks hideous. But to then be able to use it to basically look through walls and find things, that's pretty cool. And it could help you out as soon as you learn it. Are you familiar with the law of conservation of matter? I think I am, I dropped an ice book. But to my understanding, you can't create matter where there wasn't already matter already. So in that case, it scarcely makes sense that when you kill a snowman, which would take two snow blocks to make, cost eight snowballs, they can drop up to 15 snowballs of death. It could be three snow blocks. It just seems weird, but I guess we are able to constantly mine the snow layers that generated their feet for snowballs anyway. But it's logic that might be consistent to the snow golems, but not to regular logic of science. Minecraft's textures have changed a lot of the years, but one of the most notable is when you look at the old wool colors. Now, the dyes that we use on these pieces of wool have uh, changed as well. Oh, this is me. variations to how our wool blocks look. They look like this before 1.4.2, this before 1.12, and how they look today. And while I kept making the change to the other textures, I do think that some of these colors should still have a chance to shine. And who knows? Maybe if we had a feature much like how we dye our leather armor, that would be a good little grab to this back in. That way, we still keep the colors that we're used to, and we gain the colors that even some of us are used to. 1.19 added in water block leaves. And thanks to realistic water, they're basically removed. Since now, if you want to pour water next to your leaves, you can just flow through the cracks until it reaches the bottom of the tree. And while it is satisfying to watch it all flow through, it's a no longer use water block the darkness from their souls. Last year. And to me, that might just be the biggest loss yet. But if you're a builder, this is a really <laughs> soul stuff like a fountain. Both a loss for function, but it might be a really good one. If you're a version of Minecraft, there used to be a second kind of ender. And not just with the green eyes that they ever really have. Rather, it was common for finding a new brain that was completely white. And the reason that this happened is that older versions could end up in spawn around the lowest Y levels in the world. And the void fog that generated down there messed up textures. And so when the Minecraft code tries to correct this, this is up so that the white color is completely permanent. Give it us a vinyl ender. Something tells me if you're a white grass block or a white enderman, that'd be something entirely special. In order to get to our secret base, you might want to turn on truck corners. Because when you're flying over the end void, I think we tough to tell which way you're flying, whether that's up or down. And you definitely don't want it to be down. But once we follow this lodestone compass, that'll take us right to our secret base. Down in the base of the middle of nowhere, Yeah, which means that if you have the time to sell it up, it's going to be the perfect location for your hideout. Just make sure that you really stock that hideout with plenty of rockets to get back with your light trip. Otherwise, we can still get secrecy for quite a while, unless you want to take a short way out. The Farlands, one of the most famous bugs in history. Well, I should say Twitch, like he's the most famous bug would be like a bee or a mosquito or something. But I'm sure whatever time this was in the game, it's amazing how much of an impact it leaves on players, even to this day. And so, while it's not possible to have the Farlands, <laughs> Surrender to me. That way, they don't confuse the players who have to stumble upon this in their survival moments. But you know, a lot of fans experience the Farlands for themselves. Instead of having to watch a YouTube video to get experience. You can see when gas shoots a fireball at Steven and others other in the nether, it doesn't just shoot the fireball, but it also pre curls back in the action shooting. Which in the actual game has never happened. And that just goes to show you Minecraft's lackluster representation of physics. Since by having no moving quote, this disobeys the moon's third law of motion. Every reaction should be an equal and opposite reaction. But obviously, gas have never been the real one either. Maybe it's just how they work. There's not just one more he's proud of them. Unlike in Java, if you play a better operation, you can actually be more than a six friends. Yourself plenty of a chance of golden apples and places to stay alive. And then, when you drop down onto the void, you can actually still walk along the floor. Not that it's an enjoyable stroll, but it's better than dying already. But it's a lot of dope mix. So, why does this one not burn? Well, since boats are entities, we can sell them into the command like this. This one's not. And by putting in a little bit of an axe here for the MBT, that boat just needs to get it done. And we'll see as much more detail as the bottom of it. My 
thanks, dear friends. No thanks, dear friends. Hope you want to switch to survival and try this out. I will mention that you need fire resistance. With your hitboxes, you dip a little bit too low into the lava, and unfortunately, even though the boat's invulnerable, it doesn't mean that you are. So apply some magma cream before you try this. Here's how to turn your strider into a rider down. Then it's back in snapshot 20w13a. It was a glitch that was added in when you jumped on a strider and then had a focus on the to guide yourself. And then when you yourself against these blocks, that actually allowed you to travel 10 times faster than you normally would. Even the strider looks confused, and I can't say I blame it. Luckily, the nether doesn't have any speed limits that I know of, but even if it did, you'd be moving so fast you'd be able to avoid those laws anyway. This might look like a fall to certain death, and really, it will be, unless you're able to land in the one pixel worth of water coming from this one block chest. And the reason it's exactly one pixel is that chests are exactly one pixel smaller than a block on all sides. And if you really want to make this trick seem even more impressive visually, then you can let the water flow as far as possible to the chest corner, so that it's also as thin as possible could be. At this point, I just think it's funny that this near microscopic amount of water is able to break our fall of um, something like a cauldron it's never been able to. And honestly, it gives me another opportunity to call out the cauldron for being a bad block. That's a worthwhile skill in its own right. Now when you go to the nether, you notice that things start to fall apart fast. Quite literally. Since even though the netherite won't fall on us by default, the same can't be said for blocks that you find in different biomes. And all of a sudden, that makes things like the soul sand valleys, the warm forests, the basalt deltas into real treacherous places to explore. And believe me, if the risk of being squashed by a falling block wasn't enough, the amount of lag in this college is going to allow you to make other mistakes as well. And really, you're just switching out one pain point for another. I'd say just get your blaze rods and never come back. And while the world may not have a chance to take this bad enough, the world may not have tripped these gets even crazier. Now, while we could make this only one block thick, the better results that you see here are making thicker and thicker layers of dripping. Let's as soon as we spawn in and step on our first victim. That block update will cause the drip leaf underneath us to realize that it's not staying on the supporting block. And so, pops off as an item. Then this happens again to the next drip leaf. And again to a few more drip leaf. Until eventually we create a ripple of destruction throughout our world. It's like the opposite of watching grass grow on a field of dirt plots. Instead of watching a bunch of drip leaves learn their dirty secret. None of this is real. We live in a simulation. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Time in Minecraft, the deadliest mob in the game happened to be a falling block. Yeah, it doesn't look too intimidating here, but back in Snapshot 18W31A, there's a peculiar bug where if you drop a falling block on top of a mob, for some reason that would cause the mob to sink into the ground. And fortunately, we weren't in the safe room, because it's the play was squashed by a falling block, which is far every other block in the world, including Bedrock and Ty the Boy. The only ones who are safe were shoulders. Maybe that means their shells are better for armor than we thought. If you get in the boat and ride it off the cliff, you won't take any fall damage. That's not the weird part. The weird part is that if you take a boat and ride it off of specifically a 49 block tall fall, then you'll die of fall damage, even if the boat breaks too. Now, that'd be okay if 49 blocks is the limit, but the fact that you're able to fall with over 50 blocks tall and still survive, I don't get what's so special about block number 49. Or when you fall with over 114 block fall, then both you and the boat survive, but then when you get out, the boat will still break. And again, that's the only block 114 that you could ask. Minecraft villages today look very different from how they have in the past. And while a lot of those changes have been pretty good improvements, I do think it's weird that gravel roads were taken out entirely from villages. Now, don't get me wrong, in some cases the path block can fit just fine. But out in a desert or a snowy biome, not as much. And really, I think bringing back the gravel roads for cases like this would just make more sense. And it would help give a little bit more variety to how these generate. Which, with how much more often the villages generate since 1.14, it'd be nice to have a little variations so they don't get old as fast. Here's why the hanging sign might be one of the deadliest blocks added in Minecraft. No, I'm being serious. If you put a bedrock condition and place a hanging sign like this, then by throwing a channeling enchanted trident into it at the right angle, you'll see that the trident gets stuck, but it's not deadly. At least, you think it isn't. That doesn't tell you have an entity actually walking beneath it. At that point, the trident thinks it's supposed to spawn some lightning, and any bomb that comes close enough to it will be struck by lightning many times a second. And then when your friend thought it was just a simple store selling tridents, it quickly turns into a funeral home. There, funeral home. In the trail of 1.15, we can see an iron pole holding out a copy to a villager, which will still happen, but the only thing is, the villagers never seem to care about it anymore. Because of all the buggy changes that are added in 1.14, one of those is that the villagers will never take the poppy when it's given to them. And apparently, Bojang didn't even know that they broke this in the last update. Because even after it stopped working at 1.14, the 
admitted into this trail after 1.15. The anti-duplication machines are great, but getting slime blocks to coral early on is a real tough business. So instead, we can take after this user's design and make an easy early game cobble farm. So if my supplements are filled with a lot more observers, we're able to glitch out the team to just the same, essentially duplicate for all our uses. And then with enough cobblestone generators to pack the inside of the blast chamber, this is a fully automatic way to get loads of cobblestone, which will be handy because as soon as you do get a silk touch pick, you're really not going to get a lot more cobblestone from that point. So, better to stock up while you can. The Morph mod is one of the most popular Minecraft mods in history, and for good reason. Shapeshift is fun, and Mojang must have known that, since they added in the Pokemon of the Entity in Snapshot 23W13A or B. Yeah, that's literally the name of it. It's a bull joke. Stick with me. <laughs> well, I think adding back in this potion and survival would be too much. Just having the ability with commands to turn yourself into any other mob, that would be great for Vanilla. Particularly great for all the channels that do 100 days of living as a mob. Oh, if you do that, please just turn that into a buff version to those mobs, which only exist in YouTube thumbnails. If we zoom in and look closely, sure enough, none of the skeletons walking towards Steve actually have any bows and arrows here, or any weapons. They're really more walking like zombies. Which is made even weirder by the fact that earlier in the trailer, they show skeletons coming out of the sand dunes, and those skeletons have their bows and arrows. But they still got the spider climbing wrong, so some things never change. This isn't an armor stand, or rather, it's me. Because by putting on the same set of armor and then drinking it, Visibility potion. We can do something of a mannequin frame and hide in plain sight. And while this is definitely cool someone at a glance, the key thing to note is that interestingly, the player is shorter than the armor stand, even if you equip the same armor. So I definitely wouldn't want to hide next to other armor stands if you do this. Those static statues could be a dead giveaway. And if you're worried about the potion particles that are coming off of your body, then I mentioned that it helps to do one of these next to an area of beacon beams. Since then, the player's already used to the potion particles coming off of the mother's strength it's flows strength through me. Did you know that chess used to be a full block? Size, which not only looks weird to see today, but also that they could do things like redstone and dwarfs on top of the chests. And having the ability to do that in recent versions would be a really welcome change for redstone. While well, barrels are so good for this, let's face it, you also can't use those double chests. You're not going to be able to double chests all of the storage and all of this functionality in the past, I think that'd be fun to explore. If you're able to fill up your shoulder box full to the room and the rain, you're probably feeling pretty good about yourself. And if you're able to fill up a double chest full of shoulder boxes just like that, come on, on top of the world. Until, of course, we break that chest that's over the lot. Because at that point, even if our netherite doesn't burn, Thanks. we just should get it. That says that she's double chest is guess that wasn't too bad. 3,312 items. That means that with the way that Minecraft creates item entities, that's 1,458 stacks of items that you gotta worry about in your world. Which, I know it's all netherite and that should be a good thing, but when your computer's about to put you back in the Stone Age, you won't be too thankful for your lung of ancient debris. It's really just gonna be a hot mess. And much the same way as the wither, we can now only spawn our iron golem sideways too. Since if we were to try to place blocks beneath their arms to support them, that doesn't work. It just disables the spawn of the golem. But if we lay it flat on its back, the golem will spawn just right. And honestly, it's safe to place the pumpkin on the ground anyway. Because they're a lot more fragile as they come. So far, nothing seems wrong about this world. Maybe a little boring, but nothing will look against it. But uh, yeah, don't look up. So as with all the commands, we're able to set up a sheet of animals that's going to drop down on us at any second. And while they're falling down to the ground, they're going to just count as entities. Which, for one, is going to give you a lot of lag. And then that'll get even worse as soon as those anvils start to hit other mobs underneath them. All of a sudden, you not only got a lot of anvil entities, but you also got a lot of item drop entities being caused by the mobs getting killed. Ah, oh, not to mention the sound, too. You might want to unplug your headphones before you try this in your world. Or really, just not until, like, your whole PC. It'll have the same effect as this does. In the final shot of the Minecraft 1.20 trailer, when Steve's running into the cave, we see a few anomalies on the wall here. Unfortunately, without the use of mods, the spiders cannot climb horizontally. This simple little piston contraption, we're able to completely break Minecraft logic. Now, when the sticky piston retracts, it doesn't properly update the block that's on top of it, or the one you attach to the piston's arm. And the reason for that is because the piston doesn't actually think it's supposed to work. Since the obsidian's keeping the slime blocks from eating, and as such, the slime blocks aren't the only one that doesn't move. And we can get all of these illegal blocks that you see here. Given it's one of the simplest ways to do update suppression, and we'll get to the worst spotted versions by the app. My advanced city's tough, but this will make you feel lucky if you can pursue one again. Since by using the slash place command to place down an end city structure, we'll sure enough get an end city. But we don't have to just type in that command once. And